from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Friday, January the 12th, 2024. Israel had its day in court today, presenting its case at the International Court of Justice in The Hague in response to the allegations brought by South Africa accusing Israel of genocidal intent against the Palestinians in Gaza. As we reported to you, South Africa's claims make no mention of the Hamas massacre on October the 7th, nor of Hamas's using its civilians as human shields. Israel's Ministry of Foreign Affairs legal advisor Dr. Tal Becker opened the proceedings today addressing the blatant omissions. He said the applicant, South Africa, has presented a profoundly distorted picture to the court and noted South Africa's delegitimization of Israel since its establishment, saying it is unsurprising, therefore, that in the applicant's telling, both Hamas's responsibility for the situation in Gaza and the very humanity of its Israeli victims are removed from view. Becker went on to show how it is not Israel who should be facing these charges. If there have been acts that may be characterized as genocidal, then they have been per perpetrated against Israel. If there is a concern about the obligations of states under the Genocide Convention, then it is in relation to their responsibilities to act against Hamas's proudly declared agenda of annihilation, which is not a secret and is not in doubt. The key component of genocide, the intention to destroy a people in whole or in part is totally lacking. What Israel seeks by operating in Gaza is not to destroy a people, but to protect a people, its people, who are under attack on multiple fronts, and to do so in accordance with the law, even as it faces a heartless enemy determined to use that very commitment against it. Becker concluded his opening remarks asking for the court to dismiss the charges for what they are, he said, a libel designed to deny Israel the right to defend itself according to the law from the unprecedented terrorist onslaught it continues to face and to free the 136 hostages Hamas still holds. Israel's operations continue in Gaza, battling terror group Hamas. The IDF shared today that over 700 Hamas rocket launchers have been destroyed since the beginning of the fighting in Gaza, saying the IDF is working to destroy Hamas's rocket launching capabilities. And the IDF shared that a number of rocket launches were detected from Lebanon today towards various areas in northern Israel saying IDF forces attacked the sources of the shooting and other areas in Lebanon, also hitting several terrorist infrastructures used by terror group Hezbollah. The United States responded to escalating attacks by Yemen's Houthi rebels against commercial vessels in the Red Sea. President Joe Biden said yesterday that U.S. military forces, together with the U.K., and with support from Australia, Bahrain, Canada, and the Netherlands, successfully conducted strikes against a number of targets in Yemen used by Houthi rebels, whose recent attacks include, the president said, one directly targeting a U.S. vessel this past Tuesday. The Houthi attacks began after the Hamas massacre targeting vessels they deemed to be linked to Israel. Well, this Sunday marks 100 days since the October 7th Hamas massacre and 100 days of captivity for those 136 hostages still being held by Hamas in Gaza. This morning, some 2,500 people gathered outside UN headquarters in New York City, calling to bring the hostages home now. Among the speakers, 13-year-old Hilal Rotem Shoshani, who was released from Hamas captivity 50 days ago as well as the son of hostage Gadi Moses, Yair Moses, as well as New York Senator Chuck Schumer and New York Governor Kathy Hochul, who repeated the call to bring them home. I want the hostages brought home. I want them brought home now, and I want the rest of the world to start saying the same thing, because it is barbaric and inhumane to hold them one day longer. Bring them home. 
And there are a number of rallies and events to mark the devastating milestone this weekend, including from Rachel Goldberg, who has been marking every day of her son Hirsch's absence with a piece of tape and a black marker. And she asks that as we mark this horrific 100th day, we all do the same in solidarity to tape the number 100 over your heart and share your support. Posting a photo with the hashtags bring Hirsch home, bring them home now. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Friday, January the 12th. Live Shabbat services are coming up from New York City's Central Synagogue, followed by Shabbat services from the Hampton Synagogue. At 8.30, it's the 2021 World Zionist Organization Bible Contest Finals. At 9.30, the film I Was Not Born a Mistake. At 10.30, a replay from the Hampton Synagogue, followed by a replay from Central. And coming up next, a look at this week's Torah portion. And that's the JBS News Update for Friday, January the 12th, 2024. I'm Tisha Bader. I will be back with the news on Tuesday, wishing you a meaningful Martin Luther King Day and a Shabbat Shalom. Am Yisrael Chai.